and and please feel free to share that kind of information if you like and if you're looking for a knitting group or anything yeah. um we're all about connecting up mm. well do you do you know you do you know about our knit alongs then where we are um i mean it's not in harrisburg but it's it's online in the evening and often on saturday and we do knit alongs kind of back to back so um so the latest one was a mystery, is that? The new one coming up is a mystery knit along. Oh. It's, um, it's um, and you know, I, I was gonna talk about it at the end, but I might as well talk about it now. <laughs> Our mystery knit along, um, signups are open now. It begins on June 9th. Um, our first Zoom will be on June 9th, which is a Wednesday evening from, um, the Zoom will be open from five to eight, but that's um, to give people in Europe, a chance to come in at the early end and people on the West Coast to come in at the later end if they like. So you don't have to come, you don't have to join for the whole three hours, but uh, it, it's a shawl knit along. And when you sign up, you'll get the first, um, the, the intro set of instructions, like your gauge, your needle size, what type of yarn and the cast on. And then the first clue will drop uh, the day before the first Zoom. So the clues will come down on Tuesday and we'll meet on Wednesday. And um, the the entry fee is $17 for the pattern only version, which you'll get the pattern. And then um, the um, we're, we're doing it as a fundraiser to, to support a bee sanctuary. So, um, so the the fee will include a, do a donation of about 60% of the fee goes into the fundraising. And then we also have kits available in several different of our yarns that you can, um, that you can uh, buy. And the kit includes the pattern and um, the, you know, the yarn and um, a little surprise comes with it, a little goodie comes with it. So those are all available on our website at barenakedwools.com. And if you get our newsletter, you've probably been hearing yeah. about this. Or yeah, if you follow I, us. I, I, I trust you more than other mystery knit-alongs. Um, I don't know that you of, should, but. <laughs> so um, starting well, a project when I don't know what I'm going to get. Yeah. Well, for sure, um, the pattern has been completely proofread um, and tech edited. So that's all set to go. We're all set okay. with that. It's been knit by me um, several times and I'm about to start another one um, because I'm kind of obsessing about the yardage on, on the one. But anyway, um, it's that's just me. <laughs> uh, but it, it'll definitely be lots of fun. Our knit alongs have been, I think, lots of fun for everybody. Um, there will be a catch up week in the middle. So if if you're making the large size and you need a little more time to keep up with everybody else, um, there will be a catch up week in the middle. And what else can I tell you about it? Um, oh, is it um, lace on both sides? It is not. Um, okay. it, if you're a non lace lover, you'll probably love it. Um, and there'll oh, be, I, <laughs> there'll be some video tutorial to it. So there's help me doing it. So, um, and of course, all the support of all the knitters, you know, it's, um, <laughs> we're not a cutthroat group at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah. I love lace. I'm, and I, I was about, I'm about to cast on with the Kent lace that I got, uh, this uh -huh. month. Um, Phoenix Rising by Sivia. So oh, lace nice. is my lace is definitely my thing, although I knit almost anything. Yeah. Um, just like to know what I'm getting into. Yeah. <laughs> um, in fact, I think when you download the pattern, there's a brief description, a little bit of what's going to be going on, but you won't, you won't know what you're knit. You won't know the pattern you're knitting or anything for a while. <laughs> Okay. So, um, it'll it'll be fun, and um, and it's a it's a fall winter weight piece. 
So oh. the, so we're not knitting with really fine yarn or anything like that. We're trying to be as inclusive as possible in terms of skill level. So yeah. And with that, with the mention of Kent Lace, <laughs> let's get into the barn box chat. So everybody, um, I hope everybody has gotten their package by now. And if not, if you feel like something could be wrong, well, Jose, <laughs> Jose lives in the hinterlands a bit and it's never, it, I mean, it sometimes, arrive. yeah, sometimes it comes right away and sometimes like, yeah, um, but with the, with, it with goes COVID, about. Right. With, with spotty COVID outbreaks in, in the postal service and, and things like that happening, um, there's still maybe people who have not received their yarn. Um, and so I should at least show it to you. Hang on one sec. Um, I don't know why I didn't prepare this, <laughs> but let's get some out. Let's see. All right. <clears throat> and for whoever asked about recorded sessions, we are, we always record the barn box and post that later. So um, if you have to leave or you can't make it to one of them, they're posted later. And I believe for the uh, mystery knit along, we're going to be doing a similar um, thing. Okay. So when we introduced the Kent Lace last month, we introduced five shades and they're all um, kind of soft colors. And then for barn box, we, um, oops, I showed you the wrong five shades. Um, and then for barn box, we produced a new color, which is the um, beach pebble. It's a medium cool gray that falls between the tide pool shade and the um, white sand shade. So just to back up a little bit, our Kent lace is our Kent line is a line of yarns we've been producing almost since the beginning of our yarn production journey. And I believe we started producing it in 2014. And um, it is a Romney Merino blend. So it's 60% Merino, 40% Romney. And Romney wool is um, a long wool. It's a, it's a luster fiber. And what that means is that it, the fiber itself tends to be straighter and have um, a fairly, uh, I don't wanna call it a shell, but you can think of it like a shell. The scales along the, the fiber are longer and uh, more tightly um, uh, compacted to the shaft of the fiber, and that makes them more lustrous. When we say luster fiber, we mean that it is a fiber that is tends to reflect light really well. So the scales along the hair shaft are um, are more compact and longer and and harder, uh, slightly harder. So so they reflect light a little bit better, and the fiber is also straighter which means that it doesn't give you, um, on, on its own, it doesn't give you as, um, as much body and cushiness as a merino fiber might, which is very soft and very crimpy and very elastic. So the Romney fiber is a little less elastic, it's straighter and shinier. Um, and mixed with the merino though, that gives it some softness and body that it doesn't have necessarily on its own. So the blend is really nice. It, it's, um, and we get superior Romney fiber from upstate New York mostly um, and surrounding area um, there in from upstate New York, New England, a little bit from Vermont maybe, but most of it is for really from one farm in, in upstate New York. And she's been, she's been providing our Romney fiber ever since the beginning, um, the bulk of it, and every year it just gets better and better from her flock. Um, we get we get a wide range of colors from Romney wool. It is a heritage breed. It's a British breed, and it's a heritage breed, meaning that it's it's domestication and development over time 
was allowed to happen more or less naturally within a domesticated process. And it wasn't, um, and the color wasn't bred out of the breed. Whereas a lot of modern breeds are bred to be white so that their wool is more marketable in the textile industry. Romney was allowed to be, um, it, it was, a, the colors were allowed to develop in all their glory. So with Romney wool, you can get everything from a sparkling white to a, a black fiber and everything in between. You can get warm browns and cool grays and a wide range of, of lovely shades. And then by mixing those, you can really expand the, the color range. So our full Kent line, our DKs and worsteds are now, I believe we now have nine shades um, from white all the way to an almost black charcoal gray. And um, some of those are warmer tones and some of those are cooler tones. And what we did with the Kent lace when we wanted to develop that was to choose among the softest shades, at least to get started, um, to, um, to produce our lace yarn. We came to a point with our lace yarn stock in our business where we didn't really have access to lace yarns that were not white. We, we had been producing um, a mohair merino blend and a mohair silk and coopworth blend that we could do in shades, but our but the mill that we 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 stopped working with that mill, and um, it's been hard to find a mill that will work with the with the mohair producer that we like. And so um, that our mohair lines are are on hold for now. But we thought maybe the Romney being Romney is similar to mohair in that it is a straighter luster fiber. So we thought maybe the Romney line would be a good place to, to create a lace yarn that would be comparable to the mohair lace that we used to produce. So we, we, um, we went to our Romney mill, the, the mill that spins our Kent yarn, and we asked if they could give us some samples of a lace weight with the same yardage as the old Chabri. Um, it's got 750 yards and four ounces, a two ply construction. And, you know, we would, we would look at a couple of different twist options in terms of the tightness or the looseness of the twist. Because for a lace yarn in general, you do want a looser twist so that the yarn will relax out when you block it. But um, with a yarn this weight, it's totally possible to knit garments as well. And we, we want the twist of the yarn to be in just in the right spot that it will make nice garment fabric and nice lace fabric. So that's a little bit of a process. Our first samples that we got were a little loose and um, we asked them to tighten it up a little bit and also to make it a little thinner because the first samples were slightly heavier and I felt like they were great for garments but not for lace. So what we ended up with was what I feel is such a perfect weight. It's, um, you can knit this on up to size I would say seven needles. I've, I've been knitting it uh, quite a few things on size six needles and size five needles. And it's very comfortable to knit on that needle size. And I would say you could even go a little looser for a more open cobwebby looking lace. Um, let's see. And I love the colors. We have um, everything from the kind of peachy beige of the, uh, wet sand to the um, more metal gray, kind of a gunmetal gray of the tide pool. And um, there are even, you can even group the yarns so that you have a gradient set in the cool grays by, by using the white, the white sand, the beach pebble and the tide pool. You can, you could knit a half shawl with this with a set of these, it would be really beautiful, traditional Shetland half. Um, and then you can mix the, the warmer tones 
the three, the beach glass, which is the darkest brown shade and the wet sand and the white caps to get a warmer group. And if you wanted to, you could even add the wet sand in, which has a little bit of a, it's, it's a cooler gray, but you can, it does mix well with the warm shades as well. So there's a lot of versatility with what you can do with this. And um, I've been really excited because in addition to some of the beautiful lace pieces that we've knit, which I started out by knitting the Caladium scarf, which is this, a fairly new pattern. Um, I'm trying to get close enough here. So this is this has a lot of holes. It's got a lot of airy look to it. It's very lacy, um, but a simple pattern to knit. It's not it's not difficult. It doesn't have lace on both sides or anything like that. Um, this whole scarf is knit with one skein, less than one skein. I think it's um, I think it's about probably like two thirds of a skein, maybe five hundred yards, and uh. It's very light and airy. It's a perfect summer scarf. And if you make it long enough and wrap it enough times, you can, of course, wear it in the winter too. And then um, the Isadora sample that we had, we had this pattern re-knit in the Kent lace. This is another beauty. The edging on this is just, it's so spectacular. And it's a nice wide scarf. So you can even wear it as a stole if you if you knit some extra length onto it. It's definitely uh, wide enough to wear over the shoulders of a summer dress. So that's Isadora. And then my favorite, we re-knit the Pothos shawl, which was the original sample was knit in our Better Breakfast fingering yarn. And um, it's a heavier um, look. It, it's pretty that way. And lots of people like to knit with that weight of yarn, but in the lace yarn, it's just so ethereal. You know, it's so much different than how it looks in the original pattern photos. And I just love it. I love the great big leaves that are solid against that sheer, you know, mesh background. It's just so pretty and it has, it has a lovely visual weight with that, you know, with the large leaves at the hem, but it doesn't feel heavy at all. So I love that. So you get all this beautiful lace action, you know, beautiful drape with this yarn. The long wool contributes to the, the drape and the ability for the, for uh, lace to block out really well and to hold its shape over time and not, you know, shrink back. So those are all really, good qualities that the Romney brings to lace knitting. But I'm, I'm really excited about um, the sweaters. I've knit two sweaters with this yarn and I'm so excited. So this is a new sweater pattern that we'll be releasing this week, the Dandelion Honey. It's a little, um, it's the cardigan version of the Mucarnas sweater that um, I designed in the fall. And I'll throw this on. It's a little big on me because it's for my mom, but I'll throw it on so you can see. It's a little, this version is the short sleeve cardigan. <laughs> it's a little big. <laughs> um, with the crew neck option. So it's, it's got a pretty side seam detail there. And the lace is, the lace is all, again, it's a very simple and very intuitive pattern that with um, the rest rows on the wrong side are all in knit and pearl. So there's not like wrong side lace knitting. And then the, the lace panel that's along the side seam also runs up the, the raglan. And the, ver the, the pattern includes a crew neck like this, a V neck, a a three quarter sleeve and a short sleeve, and then a long body or short body. So you can mix and match any of those elements to, to knit this. It's worked on size six needles in this yarn. 
and I knit this whole sweater with one and a half, not even one and a half skeins, a little less than one and a half skeins. It weighs, um, it weighs six ounces. So it, and at the same time, it's not at all a floppy, like overly drapey, um, overly silky cardigan. It's, it's that nice weight of like a store-bought cotton summer cardigan um, that you, you know, kind of an old fashioned thing that, but one that you would throw on, you know, all the time to run out to a restaurant or go to the store or whatever. It's, it's super pretty. And my mom saw a picture of it and was like, that is gorgeous. <laughs> so, so I, I offered to knit one for her <laughs> and, um, and the sweater is knit all in one piece. So that's another nice thing about it. There's no seaming, just just um, perfect to throw over a summer dress or wear with a skirt or in the fall to put, you know, to pair with even heavier woolens. It's, I think a really nice sweater for that too. This, this particular sample doesn't have buttons because she asked for no buttons, but um, the pattern does include a, a button option. <laughs> I know there's discussion going on. I can't pay attention to it because I'm talking, but, um, so we're just swooning over your gorgeous sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've been waiting for this one. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've, it's I've coming. made every, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm so ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. And I, I'm, I'm working on an, another new summer top that would also work with this lace yarn. So, so one of the great things about this yarn is that it goes a long, long way. So two skeins of this and you can knit a garment and still have enough left over for a little scarf or some long mitts or a little lace hat or something if you if you like. Um, it's, it's really, really nice to knit with. It doesn't feel like you're knitting with something that's too fine. Um, it has, oh, it has a wooly, I don't want to say a wooly texture. It feels like you're knitting with wool and not something too silky. I know a lot of people find lace yarn very slippery and, and this has just enough tooth to it that your stitches don't slide off the needles easily or run down really quickly if you drop a stitch. Um, it's, it's really, really nice to work with. So, so far we've kind of, um, run it through the paces of uh, several different kinds of lace stitches. You know, the pothos, for instance, is largely stockinette um, with a little bit of mesh. This little cardigan has um, traveling stitches, uh, you know, through decreasing and increasing and, and a little bit of a twist stitch at the side seam. So, um, the stitch definition of this, of the pattern in that sweater is really nice, but I think the stitch definition with this yarn has been really beautiful in everything. The, um, the Isadora, for instance, is not, is not a fabric that has a lot of natural stitch definition. And yet the, the lace pattern stands out beautifully with it and very distinct lines in the shapes. So, you know, nothing gets lost in the work that you're doing. Um, I really love that. How about some questions? Who has questions? You can put your hand up um, it, virtually in the program if you have a question and we'll be happy to, to go over that. Okay, Wanda, you have to unmute though when you ask your question. Yeah. Uh, you said you knit two sweaters with uh, the Kent lace. Which what, what was uh -huh. the other one? The same one in a smaller size. So our shop oh. sample, yeah, our shop sample is in a um, is in the wet sand in a in the next size smaller. So um, some of the photos that some of the sneak peek photos you may have seen might be that one. Just as um, it's off topic for the yarn, but back to the pattern just for a minute we have knit this cardigan in three or four of our yarns and it's it's beautiful in in all of them we've knit one in stone soup fingering we've knit, I knit um 
there's a pullover version to this pattern, the Mucarnas. It's I knit um, a pullover in the fresh lace linen blend and also in the modern deco uh, blend. And all of those yarns work really well for this pattern and all of them produce a different type of fabric. So it's kind of interesting that um, they all meet the gauge requirement um, for the pattern, but they produce like vastly different types of fabric, which is kind of really nice <laughs> um, that the sweater can be successful with so many different yarns. Who else has a question? Oh, come on. This is your time. <laughs> or do you want to know more about the wool or anything else that might be of interest to you? I don't know how to raise my hand. <laughs> oh, well, go ahead and go ahead and yeah, you so, can just raise your hand physically too. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, on the barn box patterns, the, the one that really appealed to me was the pothos, but it talks about wanting 850 yards. Uh -huh. So that is inconvenient with a 750. <laughs> so what would you suggest? Are we going to run into a problem playing, playing yarn chicken or should I just go with? You, you probably would want um, the extra skein because the, as you can see from the pattern, the it's yardage really varies um, depending on the yarn weight. So the really fine yarn weight, what the 850 yards is with a very fine yarn weight. And the, I think the finger in the fingering yarn, it took 1150 yards, I think something like that. So there is a range of yardage and I would say that this yarn falls maybe in the middle, which is, you know, we didn't predict this yarn would be available when the pattern was published several years ago, but we do like, and actually let me, um, let me quickly go weigh this shawl just to see what actually was used. Melissa, we can split one if you want. There's an idea. There I really go. like this color that we yeah. got in the barn box, but I've already committed to dandelion honey like so heavily. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. You so the, the, the completed patho shawl, which I did not knit myself, weighs 4.15 ounces. So oh, it did it it did use just over just over um right. at least in weight just over. Now, if you weigh your skein and it weighs more than four ounces, you might be fine. Um, we do have, I mean, one of the things that you can do is um, get started and see how it goes. We do have plenty of the okay. barn box lot number uh, available. We, this, the beach pebble did come to us in a couple of different lots. So the bar box lot is the largest and we have plenty of it. But if you are ordering extra yarn to go with your barn box skein, you would wanna mention that in, in your order, in the comment section of your order that you need. I believe it's lot number two that you guys all got. So you would wanna mention that. Okay. And that way we'll be sure to get <clears throat> you. And they do, the lots yeah. do differ a little bit from each other. So okay. you wanna be sure to get that. So sharing sounds like a good idea to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with with a second skein, you'd have plenty left over to knit a nice scarf. Or, you know, if that's the color that you wanted for your dandelion honey, you'd have plenty left over to- I'm off that pair. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got the wet same. <laughs> I did, I've got it all, oops, except it's the same color okay. as the other one I picked, so. Yeah, okay, ready let's go. move on. Let's move on to the other people that have questions. So Kathy, you want to unmute? Oh, yeah. Could you talk about the Physalis shawl a little bit? Sure. Um, it's one of our selections. Yes. Um, I designed that for our ensemble. I was looking around to see if we had it out, but I and I can go get it. Um, I designed that for our ensemble program um, several years ago, and it is a shawl that I've knit in every different weight of yarn. So I, I first knit it in the Kabeku lace, which was a very fine lace weight. Um, then I knitted in the Shabri lace, which is 
um, in weight is the equivalent of the uh, Kent lace. And then I also knitted in stone suit fingering yarn for a bolder, more rustic um, kind of look. Let me, do you want me to find the, the sample? If I, I, that, I don't think that's necessary, but just, you know, what you recall about the pattern is. It, it is, um, in some ways it's a challenging pattern. The hem is a lot easier than it looks. So it has these deep leaf shaped um, scallops and they look like they're all knit separately and then joined together, but that's not the case. The pattern really does scallop that sharply. So it's actually pretty easy to knit the, um, the hem. The body of the shawl is a, it's a fairly simple eyelet but it is worked in short rows. So you just have to be really careful when you do your short rows to keep the right stitch count for every row. Um, I don't know, has anyone else knit it? Jose, did you knit five salads? Anybody else? <laughs> You're muted, so. Well, I, uh, I, I'm i pretty enchanted by deadline honey, so I probably won't do five salads, but I was- Yeah, I I- well, I knit it three times and I really enjoyed it. And the um, the pattern is, the design was a inspired by an antique, by two antique lace patterns from old um, German knitting books that I have. And the, the hem pattern was just fascinating to me. But the way it was constructed in this old German book was kind of odd and I had to re kind of reinvent it to get it, you know, knitter friendly for today's um, knitter. So that was actually really fun for me to do. And then the eyelet uh, body pattern, I just love that pattern. And um, I really should use it in, in something else at some point, like a little sweater or something, but um, it's got a lot of, it's an eyelet that has a lot of texture and depth to it. And that's one of the things I really like about it. Um, it's interesting to work. It's not difficult at all. It's interesting to work. And the only challenging thing about it is that it is worked in short rows. So um, if I would say, if you love to do crescent shawls and have done quite a few of them, it might not be intimidating at all. Um, but if you're new to them, you might wanna try something easier with short rows before you tackle that. <laughs> now that you've talked about it, can we see the sample? <laughs> um, yeah, let me go find it. Hang on a second. I don't think it's very far away. Uh, let's see. There are only a few listed on Ravelry, but there are some nice photos of it stretched out with different yarn. Yeah, it's in my queue, but I haven't knit it yet. Yeah, it's very appealing. Mm -hmm. As long as we don't have to expose our cues in public, we'll be okay. <laughs> no judgments here. Uh, <laughs> Everything is in the queue. <laughs> it's the stash that re elicits. Uh, oh. <laughs> that we don't What's want to share. <laughs> Fisalis? Fisalis or? Yeah. Yeah. Could you spell that for me? P H Y P H Y S A L I S. Yeah, thank you. Sounds like a Latin plant name. It does. Oh, it's no. a botanical term. It is. Um, you know when you have lilies and and at the end of the season, like in the winter, they turn brown and they're like they have this cup shaped pod, and it opens. And between the um, kind of petals of the pod, this web of cellulose fiber um, opens up and it looks, it looks just like that. Wow. So, so that's the edging. Wow. And this is the, this is the version in Shabri lace, which is, um, you know, as I said, um, very equivalent to the Kent lace in terms of its weight. So the Physalis, um pods open up to release this the seeds inside and and that the that's what it looks like when they open up that this web of fiber stretches between the you know around the cup of this pod and it's and it's firm 
and in the very early spring you can go out and pick them and put them in arrangements and and stuff and then um let me see let me get the, make sure i have the right side facing here and then this is the eyelet pattern <clears throat> it's super pretty it has a lot of um a lot of depth and texture to it and not your usual eyelet and then the top um is also a kind of pod. I don't even know what flower it is anymore that makes this kind of a texture when it's all dried out. And Almost is that like, the bird's eye lace? Is that what it says in the pattern? Bird's eye no, lace? No, I don't know. It, oh. I, it looks like bird's eye. It's not, it's not as far as I know. Um, oh no, it's different. Yeah, it's got like a pearls it's like little circles with a pearl stitch in between it's i can't describe it really it's beautiful yeah it's got a lot of a lot of depth so and this is the <laughs> this is the mohair blend yarn so there's a little bit of um haze to it not a lot yeah and that's that's um I love knitting this pattern. <laughs> okay, Debbie. Thank you. So I have to admit, I am not um, a lace knitter. I have knit lace at the edge of shawls and I'm fine with that. But every time I start a project that has a lot of lace on it, I stop. Um, but I had picked up the Isadora, but now I'm looking at the, the sweater. Is there one that would be more applicable to me? Yeah, any of the sweaters that were originally knit, like in the Hemshaw lace or Fresh lace, would work with this Kent lace yarn. So the Salt and Pepper, Atlantique. Um, I know there's more. Um, the Violet is also um, really largely stockinette with a little um, motif in it. Um, the coast. I bet you could knit Costa Figuera with it which would be pretty, um, what else? And then I'm, I'm designing a little kind of a t-shirt now, but it will have some lace. Um, but any plain t-shirt that's knit on size five or six needles probably would, would work too. Yeah, I don't mind the lace as much as I just don't want the whole thing lace. You know, freaks I, me I, mean, out um, I bet if you wanted a very, very lightweight wild fillies, you could do it with this okay. yarn. Okay. Um, I'm, tr I'm reaching, but can't, I can't grab in my memory what my stock neck gauge is for, let's see, let me see if I put it on here. Oh yeah, it's here. So on size six needles, it's, you get 25 stitches and 38 rows in stock and mm -hmm. So um, that kind of gives you an idea of the density. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And and um, Shelly's knitting wild fillies, right? So she might be able to tell you if that gauge would work. <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Or want to see something? Or, oh, hi, Robin. <laughs> Jean is wanna... waving at you. Okay. Or Jean. Jean, <laughs> Jean yeah. Jean. Hi. I don't know how to um to uh, put my hand up, but um I got the wing of the moth scarf. Oh, or that. Shawl. Uh huh. I'm I'm really excited about that. Um, but my question is the difference between the shawl and the scarf yardage is huge. So yeah. what is it about the scarf that it's got to be so condensed? It's I mean, a lot it smaller. It, it's a lot smaller. So it really is just a scarfy little triangle. Um, okay. okay. We have one around here somewhere, but honestly, I don't know where it is at the moment. Um, it is, if you look at the pattern, the number of repeats yeah. of the body is yeah. much less and the stitch mm -hmm. count is much less. I want, you know, whatever the dimensions say it is, is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. like a lot shorter and smaller. 
Okay, so like the lace at the bottom part would just be smaller as well. Like it'll be less of it. Yes, a little bit less. Okay, okay. Uh, I think I'll make the big one. <laughs> <laughs> the bit it's worth making the big one, it, especially yeah. in this yarn. It's not going to be heavy mm -hmm. or anything. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? I have a, a question. I don't know how to raise my hand either. Um, okay. On on that new uh, lace sweater pattern that's uh -huh. coming, um, uh -huh. um, I already got a second skein of the of the lace. Um, what's the yardage on that for the larger sizes? Um, the so you can make you can make the first five sizes with two skeins, and you would need like a third skein for the. I think it has ten sizes. Yeah, ten sizes altogether. So starting at one, two, three. Four, five. Oh, and of course it depends on whether you're doing the short sleeve or the long sleeve, but, but for the version I showed you with the short sleeve and the round neck, you can make the first five sizes with two skeins and then starting at 52 inches, you would need a third skein. Okay. And then if you wanted to make the longer sleeve or the longer body, you would want to, you would want to have a third skein by the fourth size. So you can make the first three sizes with two skeins and then you need to, to go up. And when is the pattern gonna be available, do you know? We're, we're gonna release it Wednesday. Oh. Okay. So only three sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> three sleeves. I know. I'm excited about releasing this pattern. And, and I think Kai is doing the uh, a second photo shoot today with the with this sample and um, just in a different environment, different model. Okay. So Lucy. Sorry, I forgot about unmuting. Do you have sprucing close at hand, the sweater pattern sprucing? Crossly? Yes. Uh, let me see. I'll be right back. It's like having our personal shopper. <laughs> it would be nice to have an index for cool projects for partial skeins. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where color work comes in. There is actually a cowl in the barn box and there's a, that one called gray poppies that our color work that might be nice. I don't know if gray poppies would work with such a lightweight thing, but um, but yeah, the, the various colors eventually build up, right? And then you can get creative. I have a skein of better breakfast fingering and I knit a, a vest out of it and I bought three skeins to sleep well at night and I squeaked by with just two, which was a wonderful feeling. And now I'm wondering what to do with that, but I'm, you know, and then I'm looking at, at her wonderful new sweater on the mannequin behind her and that, <laughs> that, that is gorgeous. just yeah, another that's fabulous nice. pattern. And I, <laughs> my old Navy sweaters in rags and that would be the <laughs> candidate. And, now, I may have misinterpreted the question. Um, we don't have a sprossling knit in the lace yarn yet, but we have a sample knit in the Better Breakfast fingering yarn. So you can see it's a lightweight um, little cardigan. Let me, let me just button a couple buttons so it will stay in place. Um, Okay, that's better. So it, it has a little round neck, it's knit in pieces and seamed. Um, the lace pattern is really easy, it's a ribbing pattern. This sample has shaping, the pattern calls for shaping, but you don't have to put shaping. If you prefer a straight shape, you can, um, you can do that. And it's knit on, 
I don't have the pattern in front of me, but I want to say it was knit on size three needles, maybe. So it would definitely work with this lace yarn. What, what question did you have about it, Lucy? I just really wanted to see it. Okay. Somehow the button, the one in the picture has those green buttons and it throws me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so this helped a lot. Thank you. Oh, good. Okay. It's really comfortable sweater. I, I wear this sometimes when we're at a show or whatever. It looks small. It looks smaller than I'm usually comfortable with. But then when I get it on, I think, oh, it's so stretchy. And the ribbing pattern makes it, um, gives it a lot of ease okay. for Thank moving you. around. While I was back there, I just came across the, the Physalis in the stone soup fingering which you can see like how much bolder and kind of it's, you know, the holes and everything are bigger and you wouldn't think that knitting lace in a tweedy yarn like this would be pretty, but I just, I just love this. It's, you know, really still very drapey and, and sexy in this size. And it, you know, those leaves just look like they're floating in air with surrounded by the yarn overs like that. Anyway, who else has a question? If you're waving, I might not see you. So you might have to speak up and say, I have a question. <laughs> Anybody else? Oops, any other questions? Christine, you have to unmute. Yeah. I'm unmuted now. Okay. The wild fillies. How many skeins do you think it would take? Just just the two, like the cardigan sweater you just showed us? Um, it, well, of course, it depends on which size you're making. A small um, size. What does, it, what does it call for in the pattern? The wild fillies, I don't have the pattern. Oh, okay, let me see if I can get that up on my phone. I'm on my iPad, so... Um, one second. Actually... I might be able to. It covers. I don't see where it really mentions the amount. It just mentions sizes available. For me, it would be a 40. But I don't see anywhere where it says, oh, yardage required. Ha. Yeah. So 1,500. Yeah, so two skeins would be plenty. And you know, you're the thing is working with a finer yarn, you may use less yardage. That's what I usually find is that um, for some reason your the yarn type that you're using really can change the yardage requirement. Okay. So a ink and I should say qualify that by saying in sweaters that were not designed for that yarn type. Mm -hmm. So Whereas the dandelion honey is designed with this yarn, the yardage would be fairly accurate for the Kent lace, but it may vary for the fresh lace, which is a even finer um, or even, you know, it's a thinner um, lace yarn. Okay. Okay, thanks. Who else, PJ? Um, I have a question. I, I was thinking of uh, knitting a hat for a, a, a girl that's turning 16. I thought that would be kind of cute. Uh, would you suggest maybe the Kent maybe doubled in one of your like fingering weight hat patterns or uh, yeah, you not could. at all? Or what are you thinking? There is, I have a couple patterns that are, that are knit with that weight of yarn. So one is called, um, it's one of the two timer. It's not shameless two timer. Um, it it's a it's a little cable pattern. Let me find it. Sorry. Uh, oh, no, that's okay. That'd be great if it's a little cable pattern. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a cable and lace pattern that you can turn inside out. It's the same cable pattern in the shameless two timer and two for the money and all those two double okay. happiness. Um, let me just find it. Um, I can tell you that. And there are there are several little lacy type patterns like that. So 
Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. Twice as nice. Twice as nice. Okay. Yeah. The slouchy, lacy hat. So it's it's intended to be very light. And then you can knit it how, you know, you can make it slouchy or not. And then right. you can turn it inside out to wear it. So it has two okay. different looks. Yeah, it's All cute. Right. That'd be, yeah, that'd be good. It, it's like a, a something little bit, you know. Right. Yeah. And you would have enough, um, you would have enough left over almost certainly to make the um, two for the money matching mitts with it if you wanted to. Yeah, I think I would really have to measure our hands and I'm not quite. I'm not, they live on the East coast and I'm on the West coast and it's that's uh -huh. a little too difficult unless I'm actually visiting, but, but it's good to know that. Cause when I do, see yeah. them, then I could, but at least the twice as nice, cause I can just do kind of a standard head. Um, and then, yeah. That. Okay. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. I have another question. Okay. What what one of your patterns would you recommend if you are haven't knit lace in several years? There's a lot of um, beginner. You mean like a scarf or yeah, some small to that's Get back into the swing of it. Doable. Let I me. Did, I did do the grays grays scarf. Uh huh. With the last yarn we had for the barn box. Uh-huh. And that's a good one for, you know, a, a pattern like that is nice. There are really a lot of patterns that look more difficult than they are. So almost ovals is a really nice one. Um, lots of people love to knit the Aria Delicato. Um, that's a super popular um, lace pattern. The, um, the butternut scarf is really nice. Um, if you're thinking of using the Kent lace yarns, all of these would work. Uh -huh. um, even, you know, the Caladium, um, which is a recent uh, publication. That's a, that's a really nice one. Um, Campanula. Um, all, all of those are, have wrong side rest rows and intuitive patterns where the yarn overs are kind of, you can guess where the you next one is. But no. I couldn't, for some reason, when I was doing grays, I couldn't, I had looked, I looked at that chart the whole time. Not that it was difficult, really? but I just couldn't, those first couple rows got me out of the, now, uh, do you, out of well, the pattern in my mind. And, and I used, used to be able to memorize. <laughs> do you use charts or only written instructions? Or? I use charts. Okay, that's good yeah. because the chart at least shows you the shape of the lace and it kind of yeah. helps with that yeah. to give you an idea of the architecture and what you're making. It's more pictorial, so it, it kind of teaches you what to expect right. if, you, if you can get used to them. Yeah. So well, let me go to the next person. And who's next? Anybody? Everybody's so quiet today. Y'all want to get outside, don't you? <laughs> no. And what was the name of the second um, scarf that you showed, or the, the the thinner one, the thinner scarf? The, the at the caladium? beginning. Yeah, the caladium. Was it was it gray or was it light? Uh, it was light color. Okay. Was it? Yeah, the collate this one? That guy. Yes. That yeah. Guy. <laughs> this is palladium. Um palladium. I published it. I published it, I think, just before the Maryland Sheep and Wool. So about a month ago. Um okay. the, the the pattern is worked from this end. So it's mm -hmm. worked all in one piece. If you want to, if you're super like, you know, meticulous about um things being symmetrical, you could work it in two pieces and and graft it in the center because everybody loves grafting right <laughs> um but um make it wider could it be made wider it, it yes the pattern includes this is the smallest size so the okay. pattern includes another scarf that's about three inches wider and okay. then a stole it might even have two stole sizes oh. i think it does have four sizes all together so. that looks doable for me <laughs> and it was, you know, it was really fun to knit. I, I did have to pay attention to the chart for probably the first half of it. But then once I had it, 
once I got past that point, I had it memorized and I could just basically carry it anywhere with me. So awesome. thank you. You're welcome. Who else? Anybody want to see anything else? Well, did you, you want to, did you want me to bring that sweater closer to the screen? <laughs> Cause I think, I think that was published right before Maryland Sheep and Wool as well. So it might be that the barn box, um, it wasn't available. I think Jackie was eyeing it for her next uh, sweater. <laughs> uh -huh. Let's see. I'll throw it on. Um, So it has, the lapel stands up a little bit at the neck. It has, um, this is a cable panel here and the rest is the stitch pattern from the gray's oh. scarf. And the, the cable detail, so it runs all around the back. The, the buttons are optional. You can either let it fall open or you know, add buttons if you prefer closure. And the cable detail is also on the sleeve up to the elbow. And then in the back, um, I don't know, can you see it okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it gives the back just a little shaping, just a little nip along the middle of the back. So, I have that in my queue and I'm just thrilled to see it on you. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's very comfortable. Um, I really like it. I think I'm going to knit one in the modern deco sport for my mom. Um, I think she'll like it. She, she was very attracted to this one, but I think she'll really like the deco. So anyway, <laughs> that's a lucky mom you've got. <laughs> you I should tell her that. that. Yeah. <laughs> the back of that today. <laughs> we have to get her, um, we have to get her to visit with us again sometime. Maybe during the mystery gal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's I the name of that pattern I again? Wish you, what's that? Uh, the name of the pattern, sorry. It's called the Robin's Nest Cardigan. Oh. <laughs> Robin, you, you smile every time you say it. <laughs> Robin's knitting that right now. <laughs> That's right. She is. Robin, it is, hold It's beautiful. <laughs> She's been dying to show this off, so. <laughs> oh yeah, making good progress on that sleeve. Yeah. This is the sleeve. It's Gorgeous. it's an awesome knit. It's, and, it's and it looks like Robin Turner is also knitting one. I have, uh, I just finished the back of it this morning. Oh, wow, wow. Hold, hold it up. <laughs> Hang on, it's on the floor. <laughs> Oh, in the white. Oh, oh it's beautiful. beautiful. Wow. Gorgeous. That. Nice. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. It's a wonderful pattern. I haven't knit a sweater for a in an adult size for quite a while. So I was kind of tickled with it. Oh, what I'm yarn did you use? A barn owl, I think it is. It's the it's, same uh, as yours, but in the owl. Oh, okay. So she yeah, used yeah, sorry. the fin dandy yes. three ply, but she used ply. the white shape. So yep. Catherine is going to love hers when she <laughs> works on. Well, I saw her swatch, which is when I purchased that color because I went, oh, I kind of like that. <laughs> you mean yeah, you, saw, we were on it. you saw her making love to her swatch? She was, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She was rubbing it on her face. She was yeah. smitten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a little, it was verging on the obscene, but. <laughs> oh, well, we're, we're at an hour, but I want to answer everybody's questions. So if, if anybody has anything else they need to know, um, please um, let us know. Um, we're already working on 
everything for the we've been working on the next barn box for a while and um the order was placed a couple months ago it's gonna be fun <laughs> um, very excited such a tease and <laughs> very excited um i i hope everybody's gonna enjoy it it's a it's a great summer summer thing <laughs> so um so yeah, if you're if the mystery knit along sounds good to you, um, please join us and and even and please share because um, we do want to spread the word since it is a fundraiser. And even if it doesn't sound like it's up your alley, we we do also have a donation page if you just want to donate to the B um, to the B effort. The the recipient of the funds is the Spikenard Bee Sanctuary, Honey Bee Sanctuary in Floyd, Virginia. It is um, a biodynamic farm where they are um, raising bees. They're creating. Um, they have all kinds of courses in beekeeping and healthy uh, healthy hive maintenance. Um, they make products from the honey that they produce and um, the portion of their programs that we're funding is the build a hive program which places new um, hives in different areas of their community in in and around Floyd Virginia so for sure we're doing one at the um, I want to get this right because it's got such a great name it's a it's the eco center in town and um, we're funding that. And then there's a, a, a primary school that has requested a hive and we'll be funding that for sure. And we've already raised funds for two more hives. So they have yet to choose um, recipients for that. But um, one thing that I'm hoping maybe they'll let us do is uh, either yarn graffiti or yarn bomb the hives that come from us so that they'll have a little signature from us on them. So um, we have lots of fun stuff planned for the knit along, like um, like those kind of contributions. You know, if you have a scrap or a swatch from your project that you want to contribute to the yarn bombing, that would be that would be fun. Um, and, you know, we're we're thinking up games that we can play during the knit along. And so I don't know, it, it should be lots of fun. And I, we're going to have guest appearances from um, some of our Spike and Ard farmers. It, it should be just lots of fun. And, and our knit alongs are really easygoing and um, supportive. So um, we try, I don't think we've ever had one that's like competitive. I know some of them can be that way, but there's just no reason for that. So <laughs> we try supportive. to. Yeah. <laughs> We're too lazy to be competitive. <laughs> sounds about we're, right. <laughs> we're, we're too silly. We enjoy our knitting too much to be competitive about it. Yeah. So, well, all right, everyone, go enjoy this beautiful um, early summer, late spring day. And um, for those who have been in the, who were in the March knit along and are, have a waiting period until the mystery knit along, I will be here Wednesday nights on Zoom. Um, you can join us for just casual knitting if you want. All right. Good, goodbye. See you. Bye, Ann. Thanks. Bye, Robin. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.